Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. They have found something in Antarctica, and they don't want you to know about it. Governments around the world are racing now to this continent with ships, drones, helicopters, and planes looking for something. The conversation has taken a very ominous and urgent direction. They are now using terms like strategic importance, arms race, and contested territory. Does that sound like scientific research to you? In tonight's video, I'm going to read into some of the subtext of some recent scientific articles to show you what's really happening what they don't want you to know about. Now, during our investigation into Antarctica, many people like to look at the dragons and all of the buildings and the skulls and all this other stuff that we found. To me, this opening in the side of this ice sheet is the biggest smoking gun ever. It is as wide as a three-lane highway and 50 feet tall, perfectly shaped. Now, some might ask, what are they looking for? What are they doing? Well, there's an article out from Australia that I think gives us a clue. Coalition pledges $804 million to ensure Antarctica is, quote, free from conflict. Drones, autonomous vehicles, and helicopters will aid research and exploration in the increasingly contested region. Now, many people talk about the Antarctic Treaty of 1961 that was basically a pinky swear treaty. There's no enforcement mechanism. But wait until you hear what they're bringing. And I want you to ask yourself, does this sound like people just doing scientific research? Prime Minister Scott Morrison will announce $804 million for strategic and scientific programs in Antarctica over the next decade as the government flags its intention to increase Australia's role in the increasingly contested region. Now listen to this. The package, about half of which is committed over the next five years, will include $136 million for charting activities, mobile station, and 
traverse capability, pardon me, and $109 million for a new drone fleet, autonomous vehicles, and medium-lift helicopters. Medium-lift helicopters? A drone fleet? What's this for? This will allow the government to map inaccessible and fragile areas of East Antarctica and set up a new Antarctic Eye program that will monitor parts of the continent with integrated sensors and cameras that provide real-time information stop right there. Why would you need real-time information from sensors and cameras if it's just a giant windswept frozen plain of rock, ice, and snow? What are you looking for? What do you think this Antarctic eye is going to see that would help you determine in real time whether this area is good for mining or bad for mining, you know, whether there's life there or not. It, meaning, of course, penguins and seals and that type of thing. The helicopters, which have a range of 550 kilometers, which is quite a range for a helicopter, will allow researchers to travel to parts of the continent that have not previously been accessible using the government research vessel RSV Nuyina as a launch pad. The money we are investing in drone fleets, helicopters, and other vehicles will enable us to explore areas of East Antarctica's inland that no country has ever been able to reach before? Really? So if no country's ever been there, how can you definitively say that there's... Never mind. Critically important to Australia's future. Now, of course, they have to mention climate change. But let's jump to another article real quick. Largest Jurassic pterosaur on record unearthed in Scotland. Now, I'm sure like, wait a minute, hold on, McKee. Scotland, that's the other side of the planet. Wait until you listen to what they admit here. During low tide on Scotland's island, Isle of Skye, a graduate student hunting for dinosaur bones looked down at the coastal rocks and made the discovery of a lifetime, the remains of the largest pterosaur on record from the Jurassic period. Since collecting the specimen in 2017, an eventful excavation that involved cutting out the pterosaur chunks with diamond tip saws and almost losing the fossil, blah, 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 blah. But wait until you get down here. This particular pterosaur is something that was much larger, that got larger earlier than they had thought. And it's hugely significant. Why? There are pterosaurs that are as big as small passenger aircraft. But this particular one was in virtually perfect condition. To fly, pterosaurs need, needed lightweight, delicate bones, a feature that means their remains rarely fossilized well. To achieve flight, pterosaurs had hollow bones with thin bone walls making their remains incredibly fragile and unfit to preserving for millions of years. And yet our skeleton, about 160 million years on since its death, remains in almost pristine condition. Articulated, the bones are in anatomical order, and almost complete, its sharp fish-snatching teeth still retaining a shiny enamel cover as if he were alive mere weeks ago. Now, where is Isle of Skye? Right here. This is Great Britain, Ireland, Scotland, of course, is up here. Now, did this kid go wandering off into the mountains and find some hidden cave that nobody had been in before? And that's why I found it? No. He was just ambling, meandering along the beach at low tide and found a fossil of something that they describe as possibly could have been alive much more recent than 160 million years ago. Now, the final piece of this puzzle is this. Quantum gravity gradiometry. It's a technology that can reveal virtually everything that is hidden underground. It can even peer through ice. It's what they're describing as an Edison moment in sensing. 
There's been gravity gradiometry for quite some time, but on a quantum level, it's a game changer, meaning that they will be able to employ this everywhere and the ability to go down to Antarctica and literally look directly through that ice and see every layer all the way down to the ground and below, I think they found something because this goes all the way back to 9 January 2021 with the militaries employing quantum gravity sensors for resilient maritime navigation through all imaging, finding deeply buried structures and stealth aircraft and submarine detection. Now, one might have to ask, why would the military need to find deeply buried structures? Well, what military mission is that? I mean, I know there's engineers that go out and dig for mines, but you don't need quantum gravity gradiometry to find a mine that's buried a foot deep. What are they looking for? What are they looking for and where and why are they spending billions of dollars for medium lift helicopter copters, pardon me, with 550 kilometer range for a medium lift helicopter? That is a long range. What are they looking to pull out of Antarctica? And why East Antarctica? Most research in Antarctica, in fact, virtually every picture you see on the, on the internet of Antarctica, virtually every single picture comes from right up here. I would say 90% of the pictures come from all right here, right at the very tip of the Antarctic Peninsula. There are virtually no real images from down here. And now they are racing to the interior of East Antarctica with billions of dollars using terms you wouldn't think would apply to just climate change. Contested region, arms race, strategic importance. Something's up. Something is up and they are racing to try to find something. Australia talks about uh, Chinese influence in the region. What do the Chinese want with Antarctica? See, this area of Antarctica here, I think, is going to be the key. And it's where we have found most of our biggest finds using Google Earth Pro. I wonder if some of these finds might have caught somebody's eye. And they went down there and decided to take a look and... They are finding things now that could rewrite history. Lost civilizations, technology. Who knows how history could be rewritten. People have talked about Inner Earth, Agartha. There are a lot of stories out there. There's a lot of technology out there that has been dug up historically and nobody has an explanation for it. From the Phaistos disc to the Antikythera mechanism. Imagine finding another ocean. Plants and animals. Areas completely undisturbed and pristine for thousands of years. Who knows what they have found, but one thing's for sure. It isn't just penguins and seals. 50 feet high, as wide as a three-lane highway, and it almost looks paved. And I'll leave it there. God bless, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Hot time, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Crimson King. Isn't the land of sight off 
world concerned. like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable first 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you and thank you so much. Some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world? 